Hello, my name is Michael Driscoll, and in today's tutorial I will be teaching you how to work with widgets in Jupyter Notebook. Alright, so what are Jupyter's uh, widgets? A widget is an eventful Python object. It is, in the case of uh, Jupyter Notebook, it will reside in the browser and is a user interface element, such as a slider or text box. Jupyter supports quite a wide range of widgets, including the following. Numeric, Boolean, Selection, String, Image, you get the picture. Um, I'm not going to cover every single type of widget in this particular tutorial, but uh, I will show you a few of them so that you can kind of get a feel of how they work. So if you'd like to get a listing of all the different types of widgets uh, available to you, you can run uh, or you can op import uh, IPy widgets as widgets or whatever you want to call it and then uh, print their widgets. So if we run this, you'll see that it prints out all the different widgets that are available to you. As you can see, there's some that I didn't even list earlier that you can play around with. All right, so the next step is to learn how to create a widget. Um, widgets are really useful for creating interactive graphical user interfaces for your user, and you can actually synchronize between the stateful and the stateless information between Python and JavaScript, because underneath the covers, these widgets are using um, JavaScript. All right, so let's go ahead and create a widget. Um, when you run import IPy widgets as widgets, and then you just do like widgets.inslider, it will create a widget on screen that you can then interact with. Um, if you'd like to create a button, you can just do widgets.button description equals press me. That's the, the text that will appear on the, the widget. And then you tell it to display using ipython.display. If we run this, it will create a button that you can then press. Right now, we don't have anything tied to it to actually use the events. Um, if you want, you can go ahead and run this code and basically create two sliders here. Um, let's go ahead and try this quick. And then we'll try moving it. As you can see, since they're, they're both referring to the same object, when you move one of the sliders, you're going to move the other slider as well. There's only one slider object, but both of these are pointing to the same object. So even though it's drawn twice on screen, you're basically interacting uh, with two int sliders. Now, you could, enter, you could uh, create button one, button two, and uh, have two completely different sliders, and then they would work independently of each other. Um, let's talk a little bit about the properties and keys of a widget. Jupyter widgets follow a set of rules for their properties. If you want, you can get a full setting, a full listing of their properties using uh, Python's dir function. So if we do like dir button on that function from earlier, you can get kind of a list of all the different properties and uh, functions you can work with when you're using uh, a widget in Jupyter. There's actually quite a few, way too much to cover in one simple tutorial. Um, if you want, you can um, adjust the the slider to different values. So like right now, I think I adjusted it up, so it's going to say 38. If we go back a couple of slides and bump this down, and then rerun this cell, you can see that you get a different value. So you can kind of play around with that and get it to show you different things uh, from that particular button, but this is how you would access it. Uh, if you do button.keys, um, these are how to tell you all the different things you can do with your button, sort of, you know, they, such as the description, the min, max, and disabled. You can just kind of play around with that to figure out how you can interact with your with your widget. All right, let's talk about updating um, the sliders keys a little bit. Let's see. I want to make sure I do this right. So we run this, we get our same two widgets again, and then we update it so that the button value is set to 50 and the description is set to slider. 
All right. Let's go back. Go back one, and you can see it's updated to, fit to um, 50, and we added some text here. So let's go back one again. Actually, why don't we just go grab that code and we'll just do this all on one slide. Oops. Go to the next slide. Make it a little bit easier for you guys to see what I'm doing if I just keep everything in one place. All right, so let's say we put this at 75 and run it. You can see it defaults to 75. We'll call it widget and it'll update automatically. We really don't need two, two sliders here. And you can just kind of play around with that and make it do different things, give it different values. Just to, uh, just kind of demonstrates how you could interact with your slider. Eventually we'll, we'll get to doing other fun things with it. All right, well, let's go ahead and learn how to link two of the widgets together. So when you link two widgets, um, now not, all, not all of them can be linked, but a lot of them can. So like in this example, we're gonna link a float text widget to a float slider widget. So that when one widget is updated, the other one will be updated too. Um, Jupyter calls this a synchronization of attributes. Let's go ahead and look at this example, see if we can figure out how it works. So here, when you run this cell, we get our little float text and our float slider. If I move this, it will automatically update the text. If you change this value to something else, it'll update down below on the slider. And of course, you can push the buttons too and change it that way as well. Um, the main thing to point out here is that the way that these are linked is via the JS link. That tells it to link the two together. Um, you're linking the widgets on the client side, which means that um, the local machine's hardware, like my laptop here, is going to do all of the work for you. Uh, this is usually more efficient and probably the way that you'd want to do it in most cases. Um, there, was a, there was a way to do it uh, to link them in a different manner though. I don't think we have time to look at that right this second. Um, let's see. Let me jump to the next slide. Yeah, when you use a JSD link, it creates a unidirectional link between two widgets on the client side. What that means is that you can make one of the two widgets affect the second widget, whereas the second widget will not affect the first. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here, here we have JSD link. And if we run this, we can see that float text is causing the float slider to change. But if we mess with float slider, it has no effect whatsoever on float text. So this is kind of a on the unidirectional rather than bidirectional uh, way of linking the widgets together. All right. Events. Events are, are really kind of fun. Now, linking widgets is closely related to widget events. An event happens when you interact with a widget. So like when I push a button or click on something, that creates an event to happen in the widgets way of looking at things. So let's just take a quick look at how this might work. We'll go ahead and run this. So now we have a button. This is my event handler function. Um, to hook up the event handler to the button, you can do button.onClick and then give it the event handler. So now when I press the button, this event handler will fire and it will print out this text. Let's go ahead and do that. So right here, right here, it's printing out the button object's description. We set the description to test. Let's set it to mic. We run it. Now you press the mic button. You can kind of play around with that yourself if you want. But that's that's the really generic way or simple way of hooking up an event to a widget. Um, here's another example. Let's run this code too. So here we have two buttons one with uh, text on it and one with other. We tell button on click to handle it and we hook up, well, we hook up both buttons to the same event handler. So when we run this, it says you printed test, then you click the other button 
and it will automatically figure out its description. So you can hook up multiple events to the same event handler and have them handled differently by checking the description of the button. So you could put an if else statement here. It says, you know, if button object dot description equals test, do something special. If they push the other button, do something else. All right, let's talk about this a little bit. Um, let me find the, here we go. There are things known as traitlet events. These are IPython traitlets, which ba basically give you a different method of binding an event to a function using the observe method. Um, an easy way to find out more about that is to do what I'm doing here, which is printing uh, button.observe.doc, which gives you the documentation for how this all works. Um, so basically what you want to do, uh, let me make sure I have a slide here. Yeah, basically uh, you call observe with the name of the function that you want to bind to, as well as which traits you want to observe. You can pass in a list of strings, set it to all or pass in a singular string. Um, the documentation has a pretty good example, so but I'm going to go ahead and use the, my own example here. So what we do is you create your widget, you display it to the user, which is what this is doing. Then you do intrange.observe, which is using traitlets. And um, when I change the value, it will call my my um, function and it will print out what's going on. So um, what I'm doing here is I'm printing out the the name of the object as well as um, what's changing. So yeah, in this case I'm printing out um, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this in an easy to understand way. Uh, the name is value, old is one, zero and one. Yeah, so this is this is matching up with old as being the old value, new is one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, it's as you update, it changes and changes the numbers on you. Uh, it tells you the type of change, and you know you, you can kind of play around with it. I find observe a little bit confusing to use myself, but give it a try. It's a definitely a different way of, of connecting events to your to your widgets. All right, let's talk a little bit about layout. Jupyter widgets all, all have a layout attribute that they expose, which lets you set up a number of CSS at, uh, properties that uh, control how the widgets are laid out on screen. Um, these properties include size, display, box model, position, and even more. So let's go ahead and take a look at the example. So you import layout. Tell you want a width of 50% and a height of 100 pixels. Uh, give the description 50%, 100 pixels, and then tell it to use the layout that you created up above. All right. So if you run this, you can see that this button is a lot bigger than the previous buttons that we've been using. Because we've set it to have a width of 50% and a height of 100 pixels. So this is about 50% of the width, basically. Okay, let's run this. Here's another button using the same layout. And it has a, you know, basically regular text on it. Um, I think this looks pretty nice if you like big buttons. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about styling. Um, some widgets allow you to put in a description that is too long to be shown on screen. Um, when you run the code, uh, Jupyter will cut off some of the text. So, like, this is a really long description. If I run this, you can see, let's make this bigger, that this description is just a really long and then dot, dot, dot. So you don't really see the, the full ex uh, full of description here. Um, if you go and play around with this, you'll find that the documentation doesn't really tell a whole lot about what to do in this situation. Um, but you can uh, use uh, description width as your style flag and set it to uh, initial, which tells um, 
Jupyter to use the widget label string length as its width. So when you run this, it will basically make the string longer and the int controller uh, shorter. But at least you get the full description. There's a, lot, there's a lot of other styling stuff that you can do as well, but that's just a kind of a generic uh, example. Let's talk about arranging widgets on screen. So much like you would do in WX Python or PyQt, there are ways to arrange the, the widgets vertically or horizontally next to each other. So let's say, you know, I've shown you two, two sliders and they got stacked on top of each other vertically, one, one, one at a time. But what if you wanted to put them side by side horizontally? To do that, you can use an H box. So let's create a label and an in slider and we'll stick them next to each other. The, this is also a good way to uh, get around that, that problem we were having earlier with a really long description. You can put the description into a label and then, then put it next to the slider by using an H box. And this allows you to keep the slider at its default size. Um, IPython also provides a, a V box as well. So here we're gonna take four buttons, uh, one, two, three, four, and we'll create one line of, of, um, of buttons using HBox, and then a second line using the next two, and then we'll stack the two HBoxes inside of the virtual the VBox to create kind of a grid. So when you run this, you can see that one and two are, well, you can't see it, but one and two are technically inside of an HBox, and three and four are in a second HBox, and then the HBoxes are nested inside of the VBox which gives you this nice grid format. All right, that's kind of a general overview of widgets in uh, Jupyter Notebook. I hope this is helpful to you and that you uh, go, for, go out and try some of the other widgets that are available to you. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or send me an email through my blog at mousevspython.com. I'll see you next time.